Welcome to the video walk on your Keystone Bullet Ultralight. We'll start in the rear. First things first, your bumper caps come off. Just give these a squeeze, pull them off. That's going to be the best spot to store your suit hose. That's what it's designed for. You have a spray port hookup. Quick disconnect for a little hose with a squirter on the end of it. It'll just be cold water. But that helps with the pets or got kids, spray, spray the feet off, spray your dog down if they got sandy. It is a walkable roof, however it does not have a ladder, it is prepped for a ladder. Um, you'd have us install one, they'd have to order the right ladder for it, and we get the schematics where the backers are and then we install the ladder. You're pre-wired for a backup camera, it does, not, it does not come with a backup camera, that's a separate purchase. They usually run around 350-ish for the small screens, or almost 600, 7 for the, the bigger screens. Um, just the camera replaces that little black thing right there, and then this, your screen goes in your truck. And it's wireless, it pulls power from your marker lights, so your marker lights would have to be on. I'm on to the side. Here is an outdoor shower. So here you have hot and cold. If you needed to take a shower outside, um, you could totally do that. You have your dump station right there, black and gray. So you want on your right, your black, one on your left, it's gray. Always recommend making sure your valves are pushed all the way in before you take your cap off. Oh, my arm is in the way. Yep. Cap off. Because if they're slightly cracked open and you take that cap off, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get covered in uh, stuff. 30 amp short cord. This is your short cord. This does twist to lock on, just like that. About uh, 25, 30 feet long. Most places provide 30 amp. Slide seals, just take extra care to look at them. Make sure they're not dry or cracked or anything like that. If they start getting so, come take it back for uh, slide out maintenance. Other side. Don't, don't put any lubrication or anything on these cables. Just leave them the way they are. Your main water hookup, as well as your controls for your jacks, extend and retract. That is these jacks underneath there, and then there's a spot for a backup, which would be one of the cranks in there. Battery disconnect, you turn that off, it disconnects your battery. However, if you have it plugged in to be charged, make sure that's, that's still connected, otherwise it's, the recharge isn't going to reach the battery. Hook up for satellite and cable, and then you have fresh water fill, hook it in there, fill your onboard fresh tank, city water. Black tank flush, so you can hook a hose up to the black one. There's a little nozzle on the tank, a little flush the tank out. And you can even screw this, run all your stuff up through here and into there. That way you don't have to leave this, this door open. You there, you got pegboard over there, so if you wanted to hang some extra stuff up, you could. Group 24 battery. Probably be moving great battery. Um, if it's going to be a long time between trips, I definitely recommend just turn the disconnect off if you're storing it unplugged. So that way things can use battery, the, the voltage from the battery. You are equipped halfway set up for um, solar. You just have to buy the kit that plugs in that and that just trickle charges your battery. In the winter, I definitely recommend taking your battery completely out, storing it somewhere warmer, like maybe your garage or your basement. Um, Keep the winner from um, killing your battery. Dual 20 pound cylinders. Oh, I might change to a regulator, whatever that one's pointing to. It's gonna pull from that tank first. Once it's done, it'll pull from this tank if this one were to be open. However, this doesn't move, indicating it has switched. So keep that in mind. Some people have it in the middle like that. That does not work. That doesn't do anything. One or the other. Power tongue jack, retract, extend, on or off, LED light, Boop. helps with hooking up at night. If you are going to level your trailer, don't use your stabilizer jacks, those ones I was showing you there, to lift, to raise or lower your camper. They're not meant to uh, pick it up. Use your tongue jack to get it level front to back, and if you want it side to side, you have to back it in onto some blocks under the tires to get it side to side. 
then you can snug those jacks down to keep all the shake out of it. Other side of that storage compartment. Plenty of room for any uh, unruly children or um, uh, disrespectful pets. Outdoor GFCI outlet with cable and satellite cable and satellite hookups right here and an outlet right there. And then there's a back right here for an outdoor TV mount. You wouldn't want to travel with your TV, but you can have it so you can bring out another TV, hook it on the wall outside, and then you'll have TV outside. Water heater, super simple. Uh, first thing you guys will do when you get this is run water through everything. Um, this has been um, winterized from the, this winter. Um, run water through everything to see cl perfectly clear water. Um, then you go back there um, when you're ready. Take it out of bypass. Before you take it out of bypass, put your plug in so the water just doesn't start shooting out of there. Get it threaded as much as you can by hand. Oh, don't drop it. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it right now. Get it started by hand and then run it with a socket. It's a 15 16 is the socket size. Don't over tighten it. It is plastic. You don't want to strip the threads. Once it's tight, kick you can kick it out of bypass, it'll start filling automatically if the water were to be hooked up. Now I recommend draining it after every trip. So drain your water heater after every trip and your fresh tank. So your drain for your fresh tank is, these are your two low points, right there. See those? So that'll be the lowest point of your water lines. And then that one over there, you kind of see that valve right there. That's your drain for your fresh tank. I recommend draining all that after every trip. So you don't want any water sitting in there, it'll become stagnant. However, before you drain your water heater, and you drain it from here, just take that plug out. Crack your pressure relief. Have it open like that. Water will come out. Everything's okay to get wet. Um, once it stops coming out, make sure you snap this closed. Just like that. Then you can pull the plug. If you neglect to do this first, you're going to get a hot bath. Especially if you've been running it. And you'll lose this. It'll come shooting out because of all the pressure. So that just relieves the pressure. The only other thing you'll have to do is... Keep it clean. Clean in here, clean in there. Keep everything clean, free of debris. Yeah. Exhaust for your furnace, just like your water heater, keep it clean. Clear it out of here, make sure nothing is in there. They do make screens that you can put on these. They don't recommend you run them with the screen on, but as far as like uh, transportation or storage, that's gonna keep anything from building up inside of there. Fridge, just keep it clean in here. Keep these clean. That's just for airflow. If you, if, you, if, you, if you want to, you can even take this off. Give these each a quarter of a turn. A coin, a flathead, or the back of a key, anything. Pop it off and you can clean. get further in there to clean more in there. Little outdoor kitchen area. There's that hose we went over before. Slide out cooktop. The propane hose. That goes to your quick disconnect right there plug it in there open up that valve on there it'll bring propane up to here they have little stands that fold out it's hard to do one-handed and then you just turn it to whatever you want to light and you light it with a match or a barbecue lighter whatever you have handy make sure when you're closing it your hose isn't up in your way or anything like that you do have this little lock there that will get stuck sometimes fold it up like that swoop it out of the way and then this gets latched closed like that to keep it from swinging and bouncing out and hitting this door when it's closed similar to with your fridge you do have a strap strap on there with the other half buried back in there you get it clip it together this fridge is only going to work when you're plugged in it's just like your standard mini fridge it doesn't even have a little freezer in there too Perfect for beers or drinks or anything you want to keep cold outside. That pretty much concludes the outside and we'll go head on into the inside. Before we go on the inside, these steps are adjustable. Very easy, you have pins right here. Pull those pins all the way out. You can raise and lower each leg depending on the terrain you're on. Door folds open like that. Come on in. First thing at your control panel, you can read 
you're fresh, you're fresh, your battery. I'm sorry the camera doesn't pick up the lights very well. Uh, black, so two blacks, but you don't have two blacks, so you have one black and one gray. Just They use the same panel for each model, um, so you have black one and gray one, ignore black two and gray two. You have controls for your propane on your water heater and your electric on your water heater. You have controls for your water pump. You only need to use your water pump if you're pulling from your onboard tank. So if you're dry camping somewhere or if you didn't get a site with water in time. Porch light, hit that on. You got LED lights underneath your awning. Glide room one, that'll be for your slide out. And then awning, retract and extend. Hit extend. There she goes. Does not automatically stop when it gets out. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all the way out. Um, they are adjustable and we'll show you that too. However, you can adjust, sorry, you can adjust it to have one end, there we go, that's what it looks like when it's all the way out. Just let it stop. If you keep holding it extended, eventually it'll roll up, but backwards. So they are adjustable so you can have water pitch off to one end, right here. And if you forget, it even says it pull down to adjust. Pull down. That pitches water off to one end. If it's raining a little bit, so you don't have all water come out the edge. However, it starts storming, high winds. Um, roll it back up. You don't want the, rain, the uh, wind to rip your awning or bend one of your arms or anything like that. If you roll it in wet, as soon as it gets dry and sunny out, roll it back out. Let the sun dry it out. If it retains water and you forget, you'll have dark, gross, um, mildewy streaks on your awning. So keep it dry as much as you can. Thermostat for everything. So you can have mode, fan on, hit it again, cool, hit it again, furnace, hit it again, off. So when you're on cool, you can go through fan modes, fan on, auto fan. I recommend it just on auto. Auto is going to allow it to cycle on and off. So if it's humid and hot out, it won't allow it to freeze up um, because of the humidity. It will allow it to cycle on and off to help you temperature, and then temperature raise and lower here. Quick in the bedroom, carbon monoxide alarm. Let's take your standard nine volt batteries. You have access to that compartment from in the bedroom. That's good. You can put like a Laundry basket in there and just throw your laundry in there or even a trash can so you have access to trash. Spot for TV over there. We'll go a little bit more into that. And then both doors have these straps. Unstrap them. You can open and close them. They don't lock closed, unfortunately. They don't lock open or closed, unfortunately. They lock open for travel. Come back in here. Dual USB ports and two outlets as well as little th a little thing there so you can run everything up under the shelf. Same on the other side. Bed folds up for storage. Split. So you have his and hers. You have his and hers storage as well as the closets. But we all know she's going to take it off. Get the on the other side. Emergency exit. Very simple to use. Boop. You can use it as a regular window just like that. If there's an emergency, you push it all the way out, grab the screen here, yank it off, dive out the window. Come along, TV. So now it's hooked up to the antenna. And then, that's, that's one TV spot for TV, the other one's over here. So satellite antenna. So you have a satellite hooked up, you hook it to that one. And then a mounting bracket location for a TV in here too, as well as power. And then the smoke alarm, same deal, 9-volt battery. The TV, make sure you strap it down before you travel. And we'll get it strapped on before you folks take it. Radio right below that. It's, a, it's also a DVD player, but it's not HD. It's just um, the AV composite, the, the, you know, the red, yellow, and white ones. But you have different zones. You can turn, here, turn zone 1 off. So it won't play on the inside, just the outside or zone two off, so it only plays on the inside. Have presets, push and hold to save presets. 
pause and play all the controls for skipping songs. Uh, not songs, but through channels it'll skip songs if you're listening through um, auxiliary or through USB or Bluetooth. Hit the Bluetooth button here. Um, it'll, you'll look for uh, Furion DV3100 on your phone. It'll ask for a pin. It's either going to be all ones, all zeros, or one, two, three. Then you have your volume controls here. Remote Fury TV there too. We do want to channel scan and check to make sure everything works, but if you're going to be in a far location, different from here, you have to run a new channel scan. Or even if it's getting fuzzy channels, run a new channel scan. That'll keep a... Um, that'll get everything back to normal, unless you're really far away from any um, signal. You are, do have a pop-up outlet here, GFCI protected, but it also has two USBs. When you're ready to put it away, push this red tab in like that. Push it down. Plenty of storage in here. And you do have your book of manuals and your remote for your radio should be in there too. So this has got all your manuals for everything. And anything that was installed in here, they put the manual. Even the smoke alarm and toilet, there's a manual for it in here. There's a manual for the unit itself. However, it's just a broad, broad manual. It covers all of Keystone's products, but it's always a good idea just to kind of gloss through that when you get a chance. Microwave, it's only going to work when you're plugged in. Stove tops are nice. Flip and fold. That'll act as your backsplash. Turn it to the flame. Lights it. All Same for all of them. Stove's a little different. Or your oven, sorry. Push and hold the flame like that. That's your pilot. You look in there for the pilot. And you crank this. We'll hold pushing this in until your pilot's lit. Got a light that turns on the lights around here as well as your oven light too. Fridge. Controls for your fridge here. On or off. On or gas. Um, I just recommend auto. It's going to default to 110, so if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. However, if you were to lose power at the campground or someone were to trip over the cord and you weren't to realize it and get it unplugged, it'll automatically switch to running off of propane in case you forget. And in case you forget how to turn those two simple buttons, there's even a little instruction manual like that. It'll give you any um, tips and tricks like that. If you just turn the gas on and you know you're going to be running off on a gas because you don't have power, that check light more than likely is going to come on. You'll have to wait for the propane to actually reach getting to the fridge. A little tip for that is if you can get one of your burners to light on your stove top, um, you've bought enough gas to the system that a few more minutes and your, and your fridge should probably light on propane too. And then my favorite thing about this unit is the nice big bunks. Dual bunks. You could probably fit two, two smaller children on each bunk. I guess it plenty of extra seating space. You have little cubbies over there. On each side, and dual USBs and two, USBs and outlets on each side. You know, because kids these days always have their phones and their electronics. That turns into a bed. Just pop the table up, pull them, pull them legs out. They're just kind of in there. You just pull them out. And the table rests in those little black bumpers. And you just rearrange, rearrange your that back cushion there and those two little ones on top of the, the newly created surface, and that gets you a bed. Two more smaller people or a full grown adult can fit there just fine. Two more USB ports there. Breaker box, so it has all your breakers for your 110 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt. Re definitely recommend keeping some spares, so two 40s, a 15s, and, and a 10. I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Well, that. Your propane gas alarm that's hardwired to the 12 volt system. Um, that's also a carbon monoxide alarm, so you do have two carbon monoxide alarms in here. Um, so there's no batteries you have to worry about changing that. However, they will give you um, a low voltage beep um, if your battery is, if your battery, the one I showed you um, up front, if that were to get low on voltage, that'll start beeping, telling you it doesn't have enough voltage to operate correctly. Bathroom, very simple. Single light switch turns on and off the lights. Below that is the resettable GFCI. So any of the GFCIs I showed you throughout the inside or outside of the unit gets reset from here. 
Ice medicine cabinet. We have a fan here. Kick that on. I definitely recommend having this open and running if you're going to take a, a hot shower. Um, this is going to protect the walls, but you don't want a heck of a lot of moisture and condensation to build up on these walls. So running that fan will definitely help mitigate some of that. It's also a bath, so you can have it a bath. It starts as a bath. If you want to use it as a shower, pull that up. It'll direct, divert everything to your shower head. And you can turn on and off everything from your shower head here. Um, you can even pull it off. Get your back, your legs, anything like that. Your toilet, very simple to use. Just a foot pedal right here. As long as you're pushing it, it's going to keep flushing. So that concludes the bathroom. One last little thing. So if you do any of your own winterizations, that panel right there, take that panel off. That's access to your the back of your water heater, which has your bypass valves. So one last little glimpse on the inside. And that concludes the tour of your Keystone Bullet.